Welcome back. Um, Brad, before the break, we were talking about money scripts. So let's run through some of those. Um, first one, money avoidance. So what, what kind of characteristics do these avoiders have? Yeah, so this is where we have a negative association with money. We may believe that we don't deserve money or there's virtue in having less money. So we're actually better off in terms of our values and virtue if we have less money. Now, obviously that belief pattern can be developed in a group of people who have less money, right? Trying to make sense of it, trying to belong to the tribe. Right. We might have beliefs that rich people are greedy, that money corrupts, and that having money is essentially bad. So it's a negative psychological association with having money. So uh, does financial status play a role? By the way, is, is it predominantly someone who doesn't have much or come from much, or can it be wealthy people as well that have this? Well, it's I see it on both sides of the spectrum. So I see that children quite often of people who have money may have a sense of guilt because they're aware of the inequities and inequalities and they feel bad about it. They feel that other people don't have what they have. And so then they can reject the money within their family system. And many of them go on to being self-destructive around money or repelling it and trying to live more of a middle class or lower income life because of that negative association. So, so what's a tip for them? How do you advise people who are money avoiders? The, the thing with money scripts is there's always an element of truth. And I think it's really important to honor that. There are rich people who are doing terrible things in the world and have done over history. However, that's only part of the story. Money can be used to, to have a profound positive impact on our planet and on the lives of many of us. So I think it's looking at the other side of the coin to try to balance out that belief. Okay. Let's, um, let's look at money worship. Walk us through this one and how, um, how they can change that script. So money worship is a set of beliefs that looks at money and having stuff as the key to happiness. So if I just had more money, more stuff, then I would be happy and believing that there's never enough money. Mm. And so this belief pattern, I think, is sort of the average American, to be honest, like we're just really consumer driven. We want yeah. more and more stuff and feeling like more stuff's going to make you happier. It actually doesn't. And that now it obviously does to a point, like if you're really struggling to survive this belief, again, elements of truth absolutely make you happier if you have clothing and food and a home. But buying more stuff is actually going to make you unhappy in the end because now you have higher credit card debt and more financial stress. Yeah, so it really does come down to the fact that um, you're putting your financial security at risk and you might not realize that. That's right. And yeah. you're putting money on a pedestal and, and hoping it will give you something that it can actually never give you. It's never going to give you we talked about values. It's never going to give, give you what really matters most. Mm -hmm. And when people are on their deathbeds, they're not talking about they wish they had more money. They wish they had more time to Absolutely. spend with the people they love. Yeah. Okay. Uh, money status. It, I looked at this and it is a little bit similar to, to the worship script, but not, not quite. Right. So there's a similarity here. There's a positive thing around having money, but money status beliefs, it's the keeping up with the Joneses. So just, just in case you wanted to know, it's an actual psychological thing we found in research. <laughs> and this is where we're linking our self-worth with our net worth. And so now Instagram will show you, you need to be doing this if you're wealthy and all wealthy people do this. And th this is one of the problems we have in our culture is we're inundated with a false narrative around what wealthy people do. So this is how, if somebody asked me how much money I made, I would tell them I make more than I do. Status mm -hmm. is really important. I'm prone to buying flashy jewelry, an expensive car, taking pictures of myself in front of a mansion because I want to show the rest of the world that I've made it. Yeah, social media certainly plays a, plays a bigger part in this, doesn't it, Brad? Um, last one, money vigilance. Walk us through this one. So we did this research and we gathered beliefs from, at this point, tens of thousands of people. And the good news is there's a good money mindset for you mm -hmm. if you want to have lower credit card debt, better financial health, higher income and higher net worth. And that is money vigilance. And this belief's like, it's important to save for a rainy day. And ironically, so there's that anxiety around having enough. But ironically, if you ask these people how much they made, they actually downplay how much money they have. And that's one of the big secrets that it's really tough for people to believe based on social media, but all the research on self-made ultra wealthy individuals, they have a tendency to be savers, right? Yeah. That's why they have net worth. Your net worth really does come down to how much of it you're saving versus spending. And so having a little bit of anxiety is actually good for you because it'll help you plan for the future. Would you say that most people have a mix of these personalities or typically are you, are, are you pretty predominant in one? 
That's a great question. And the answer is yes. So yeah. quite often people will have high scores in one or two areas. And I'll just give you a quick example. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit shows you how crazy we are when it comes to money. By the way, we're all crazy when it comes to money. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, if you score really high on money avoidance, yeah. so money's bad, rich people are evil, those individuals score really high on money worship. So I wish I had more money and I wish I was rich. So, wow, what, what a conflict, an internal yeah. conflict in there, bouncing between wanting more stuff and then feeling bad about having it. Okay, we're going to take another quick break and, and we'll be back.